Hi, I'm Rubus, and today I am going through uh, my first Infinity Conquest completion of the season. Uh, this is a recorded gameplay that I did off stream, um, but uh, this is something that I do each season. I try and go through, explain my thought process, and like what I think your thought process should be while going through Infinity Conquest. Uh, but this time I'm going to take a little bit of a different direction with the video, and rather than talk about Infinity Conquest in general, I want to talk more specifically about the deck. Uh, why? Uh, so for those of you unfamiliar, uh, this is the new style Sarah Control deck, uh, something I came up with back when they buffed uh, Gladiator and Maximus in the patch in December, uh, and then I had ridiculously good success with it. Uh, last season in December, it had uh, when the deck blew up on uh, YouTube and Twitter, um, the deck had the best performing uh, win rate in Infinity Conquest. And this season as well, it's also uh, performing very, very well. It's one of the top three decks. Uh, and yeah, I figured I never did really like a full guide of like how you should view different matchups, why each card is in there the way they are. And I want to do that here. Uh, so while I go through this conquest, I'll talk about the specific matches, and then in any uh, downtime, I'm also going to talk about the deck buildup. Uh, there was an OTA uh, or, uh, yesterday, and there might be some cards people are testing there. I know some people are testing Ghost. I'm going to give some of my opinions on that, some of my opinions on what's the most replaceable cards versus the least replaceable, what are meta choices uh, in this current meta, because I do believe that this is the best deck you can be playing now, which I actually couldn't say for December because Blob Thanos I think was the best deck then. But honestly, every deck I play just seems like a worse version of this. It's everything that feels good, seems like a Zabu Shang-Chi tech deck with a bunch of other cards that fit around it, uh, either Black Knight or Bill stuff, and I think it's just better than all of it. Um, and I'll explain a little bit why, but the main reason is that all of our cards dodge tech cards and uh, we have like very clear win conditions uh, and a lot of power. Yeah, let's get into, I'll, I'll put up, start up the first game uh, while I talk about the idea behind the deck and just kind of the build up to it and why it's different from the previous versions of Sarah, which have never really been that good. Uh, you'll never see a tourney player play Sarah before this version of the build. In fact, this version of the build won a tournament recently, uh, the Lambie Open last weekend, uh, which is very cool. The player played it extremely well, and it is a very skill testing deck. Um, but yeah. Uh, so to give some background, uh, when I was coming up with this deck, um, they recently did the OTA from, uh, for Maximus and Gladiator. Uh, Gladiator went from 3-7 to 3-8, and Maximus went from 3-7 to 2-6. Right, so uh, among a few different decks that I built for that day to test OTA changes, I built this uh, actually also because the ongoing Tribunal deck was really popular and I wanted to play a good Enchantress deck. Sarah was very not popular, the only versions really saw were with Hitmonkey, and uh, back in the day was Kitty Pride and Elsa was the previous version before that. Um, so yeah, here, uh, just to, so we don't miss out the game, I'm just playing out my cards. We see Zabu, we see Black Widow, I know it's a Dark Hawk deck, um, so I'm just thinking about that. But yeah, so basically it's a lot of tech cards, but right, we have our Shadow King, our Mobius, Killmonger, Shang-Chi, Enchantress. I would say those are the five key uh, tech cards. And then we have our enablers, which are Zabu and Sarah. Those are the two, two best cards in the list. This is what enables the list to be good. Um, it makes it right by including these cards, we're able to play our tech cards for cheap, which means we can combine power with counters. Uh, very, very crucial. Um, other than those, we have our power, what I would call our power trio, uh, and that is Maximus, Gladiator, and Miss Marvel, right? After you play Sarah, Maximus and Gladiator are three mana for 14 total power, which is very, very good on the final turn. Very unexpected, enables the deck to be played, in my opinion. I, I think without this, those uh, three cards, you can't really play the, uh, without those two cards, you can't play the deck. Miss Marvel, uh, as well is a four, um, 
14 that spurs across the board uh if you only have one card in the lane since her recent change her power doesn't show up until you put another card there right obviously she has a restriction where you have to put unique cost right um on her side lanes in order to get that bonus but in our deck you'll notice this our, our costs are pretty spread out we're able to play around that um fairly well that's why actually you'll see me at the beginning of the game a lot of the time put in quaker sabu in the middle lane just in case i need the power on the sides from maximus or i need to be shadow king the side lanes and i don't want to ruin my miss marvel that way uh if you look over at the game i am ahead on board um i'm expecting a combination of dark hawk and another card but my opponent did clog himself some mid so as long as I can win one of the two lanes, I'm feeling fairly comfortable here. Uh, I actually don't know how they're going to win because I get the Miss Marvel buff on Necrotia alongside the Legion. So I'm literally just going to play Legion. I assume they're going to play Darkhawk on Monster Island. Um, but I'm not sure how they win post that. All right, yeah, then Jeff does not do enough. I do believe my opponent retreats serious. That's why I'm not really commentating this matchup too much. Uh, <laughs> they just leave right away. And then, okay, and then the last two cards uh, that I didn't mention are Legion, which is our way to control the board, get rid of Stormlands, get rid of Limbo. It can do some cheesy stuff depending on what locations are available. And then lastly, we have Quake, which is a recent addition. Uh, you'll see versions of these run Jeff. You'll see versions of these run Lizard. Uh, I think she's definitely the 12th card in the list, the most replaceable. Um, I think. Killmonger is also slightly replaceable in that regard as well, since a lot of the Killmonger targets are also Shadow Kingable. Um, so those would be the two two worst cards in my opinion, but I have been liking Quake recently. I think it comb combos well with the Legion, so uh, it's harder for your opponent to predict like where you're going to Legion them. It's also just a card they have to constantly play around at the early turns, and I think it's just yeah really solid here. Um, but obviously a tech choice it's better in metas where you're gonna see uh, a storm but maybe you won't see as many other location control tools um, but yeah, i've been liking it a lot it steals a lot of cubes so that's why i include it. it's kind of like a mini legion in that sense so yeah your general game plan uh, as you'll see out is uh, you prioritize playing out sabu when you can um, Mobius when you can in certain matchups. I will say Mobius is a card that you should generally wait till turn four to play, uh, especially in the Loki matchup or um, especially in the Loki matchup. In the uh, Zabu, like Mirror, or in the Darkhawk matchup, you can also wait to four because playing on three doesn't usually achieve very much um, because they already play out, cheat out their four costs. And then if you play it on four, they can't enchant versus the Rogu, and they're forced to, they can't go a three and a two, which is a very common play. Uh, here you'll see me snap, because I'm assuming my opponent's going to skip the Collapse Mine, and my Killmonger is going to wipe their Misty off the board, and essentially they would have would skipped a turns one to three, right? And I've actually played cards onto the board. I have Miss Marvel, I have Legion, which can scam a win, possibly. So yeah. This is actually a pretty standard play line here. Just Zabu, play Miss Marble out generally if you can. It's a solid choice. Um, if you have Sarah, play Sarah on five. In some matchups, if they have Leech, you're often going to want a Leech in instead of Sarah. Um, it really depends what your hand looks like. So uh, here they play out their She Hulk early. I could Shang Chi priority. Or I could just play Sarah and surprise them with the Shang Chi. This is where cube equity is pretty important. Right? If I Shang-Chi them now, they almost certainly leave and I only get two cubes. If I play Sarah and then Shang-Chi, right, it's going to be a two cost. Um, I'm pretty much guaranteed the, uh, the, the I get to win four or more cubes. Uh, they do armor it, but if you notice, I do run Enchanters. Um, so this was not something I was too worried about. Um, that's actually why I fought for priority here. Is in case they played armor or Kyra, I wanted to be able to enchantress it and then um, destroy it. Uh, note on ordering here: you notice how enchantress, gladiator, and then Shang Chi. See, they snap me back because they're not they're expecting that I stack this enchantress and Shang. Uh, you'll notice that I Shang after I gladiator, 
And this is because if my gladiator pulls out a big card like Hulk or Infinite, I want to be able to shang that as well. Um, and obviously I play gladiator after enchanter, so whatever gets pulled out doesn't um, survive the armor. So I snap back and I'm able to steal this lane with Enchantress Gladiator Shang-Chi, which is 16 power. I lose some Miss Marvel bonus, but I wipe out 10 power on their side, and they play their Hulk, and we get eight cubes right off there. So yeah, this is pretty pretty standard thing, uh, both on ladder and in conquest. You always want to, ideally, you want to snap earlier as soon as you have the tech cards that can win you the matchup. Um, but yeah. So I guess I can just go through each card and kind of talk about how they played out, right? So I talked about uh, so far Zabu, Miss Marvel, and Sarah. Uh, let's talk about Shadow King, for example. So Shadow King is a card that's a good tech card for high evo and destroy. Uh, in the high evo matchups, you're ideally trying to hit Sunspot or Nebula um, if you're missing your Killmonger. Otherwise, you can actually use it to reset your cards from Cyclops, Hazmat, Thing, and it can often be like a 210 because of that, those effects, right? So I would say that's something very key uh, to keep an eye on. Um, so generally you hold Shadow King in those matchups. You can, uh, I think Surfer is another matchup where you also hold it. Um, but otherwise, occasionally you can play it on two. I generally only do that in lockdown matchups. Uh, Zabu is pretty much our number one priority to always play out um, on two, and except in very, very uh, niche scenarios. Um, here, I'm in a really rough spot because I had to enchant his armor, and I've obviously I pulled the shield and Asgard. I did. Um, get the Shang and Enchantress. Unfortunately, I had to Enchantress the Zabu to get rid of the armor. So I'm just in kind of a weird spot here where it's like, they're just so far ahead on board, even though I have the Sarah. The Limbo actually is good for me here because it can give me some time to try and catch back up, but I just don't think there's much I can do here. Um, maybe I could steal a game with Legion. This is actually a interesting point in the game where I'm thinking about, are they going to play around Legion or not? It is for one cube, uh, right there. I won eight cubers, so I mostly can win two cubes here. So this technically wins all the lanes if they can pass and do nothing. Um, one thing I didn't think about is the fact that they probably don't do that with Shulk already on board, but yeah. Unfortunately, they play a shocker over on the right, so I'm not able to steal that lane. Uh, but I actually would have stolen it if I... No, I wouldn't have stolen it if I killmongered left, because I would have lost mid. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of a test feel out matchup to see what they do. Uh, I have such a big lead here, where basically I just need one game where my tech cards do stuff, and I feel pretty good. Uh, Quake is a card, 2-3. You feel fine of playing her early on, too. Uh, the only times I really hold her is if I know I'm going into a control matchup. Uh, that storm, right? So if I see Nebula early, maybe I'll hold her. Um, or if there's a location that I know I want to flip later in the game. Otherwise, you feel pretty comfortable playing her on two if you have nothing better to do. Um, or if you have like a location that you need to put early power on, like Asgard, for example. Lastly, in our two cal slot, we have Maximus. This is like what I talked about earlier. Is our power card two six best stats for a two drop in the game. He draws our opponent two cards. Don't play this card on turn two. You almost never play it before turn six. Giving your opponent's cards, two cards especially, is a very negative effect. Um, there is very, very niche scenarios where you can get away with playing it early. And I'll give you uh, one or two examples of them now. I will always play Maximus on curve if I am see my opponent play Black Knight and I have Killmonger in hand, right? So Maximus, you play it on turn two when they have Black Knight out. This way you can have priority to Killmonger their Black Knight and deny them that, um, what do you call it, uh, Blade. Uh, my opponent armors the monster. I'm guessing to dodge Shang-Chi, but they also clog themselves in Great Web, which means I can just play Sarah and win that lane, and I just need to win one other lane. Um, 
I'm thinking about this Legion if I ever want to play it because it is a little bit awkward to play where I can't really fill the Mojo World if I do play the Legion, but it is something I'm thinking about. I could also turn off uh, Mojo World as well. But yeah, my opponent just plays Scar, I have priority so I can Shang-Chi it. It does take me a while to realize that the best play is just to Shang-Chi and fill Mojo World and uh, but the, the, so the issue is the quake here actually, uh, where if I quake, it's gonna flip the Great Web, and that could pull something out of mid that loses me the game. Um, so that, that is something I am thinking a little bit about. So I, I, I am just trying to figure out can they fill Mojo World? Uh, they can only ever get it up to three, so I think if I just play Legion Shang Chi, that should be the play. Um, it could also be Shang-Chi Maximus Shadow King, if I want to be a little bit safer. Right, instead of the Quake. I do believe actually that's what I end up doing. But yeah, the Quake, very dangerous here. Uh, it could be good in a certain situation, but since I already won mid, it's going to be 19 to 24. It makes no sense to try and throw the game by Quaking and have losing to Great Wolf. Um, so yeah, I just do that. I think my opponent just plays Hulk, and we call it a day. Yeah, this matchup I think is fairly straightforward, the high evo stuff. There's actually, I think we have three varying high evo matchups. Uh, one's the Affliction, so it's a Matrix she not version. Um, just try and steal a lot of cubes with a tech card if you can. I will say one of the uh, biggest mistakes you can make is losing eight cubes early, so make sure you're in a winning position. <laughs> The, I, the only times I've lost of this deck in Conquest are games I lose an 8 Cooper early to my opponent just like doing something unexpected, right? Don't don't assume your opponent's going to do certain things uh, early in the Conquest. Uh, usually you can feel them out and get a feeling of their play style if you just drag it out. Even if you're just in 4 cube games, those are much easier to come back from than 8 cube games. Uh, so that that is a mistake I still make sometimes, uh, especially in the lower Conquest, but... <laughs> Uh, so don't be worried if that happens, especially if it's like a 50-50 scenario, sometimes it's worth it. Uh, but oftentimes it's not because you are generally playing the better deck in my opinion. But yeah, it looks like we're going into another Nebula matchup, which usually means uh, Lockdown or High Evo, right, with Nebula. Um, Alright, so going into, let's go into the three cost slots now, because uh, this is something that maybe you might want to consider changing. Um, if you want to run the new card Ghost, some people have been running that in their Sarah control list. Uh, magic makes me immediately think Haiva, by the way. I don't know about this specific matchup. But yeah, so we have Killmonger and Mobius Gladiator, right? We have two tech cards. We have, all right, and our Killmonger and our Mobius. Killmonger is there to, intended to counter any kind of decks that rely on big one cost. These are High Evo, uh, Thanos that floods the board. And occasionally you'll see Zoo Killmonger will just like say goodbye to that. Um, usually always gets a lot of value. It can even get you value in the destroy matchup versus Deadpool if you can throw a prior on the last turn. Uh, and then the more important card is Mobius. I think this is a super super crucial card here. I do not I probably second one of uh, third best card in the list um, behind Zabu and Sarah. This forces your opponent to play fair basically like we're playing an unfair deck where we're cheating a lot of mana or energy we are destroying any kind of fun stuff that our opponent's trying to do and we're dumping a lot of points for cheap mobius means that our opponent can't do the same thing they can't play their own sarah they can't try and be cheesy in any sort of way uh, you'll notice I'm baiting my opponent into an 8-cube game here. Uh, I'm trying to Legion away this Limbo. I see the Miss Marvel in the Vision. I snapped after I transfer to Miss Marvel since I'm so far ahead. I had this huge massive power play coming up. I see the Vision and I'm thinking about Doctor Doom at this point and I'm trying to figure out if they move the Vision, can I beat it everywhere? Uh, and I kind of can. I'm forcing a tie. I think in multiple locations to the Doom, and then I win the tiebreaker in whatever location the Vision's not in. This, I believe, uh, what will happen if they Doom, and they do Doom. Uh, and I actually force the tiebreaker middle, which, which is not something I expected. Um, 
or I tie two lanes, and then I win the last one by two. So barely, but uh, it, I did count it out. Um, where even if they vision mid, I still would have won the tiebreaker. If they vision right, I still would have won the tiebreaker. Um, so very important to count. Make sure you don't lose those types of eight cube games on uh, when you're getting rid of Limbo, um, especially into weird decks like this one, where I thought it was she not, and then it actually was a Doom deck. So as soon as right, as soon as you see the Miss Marvel vision, I think you just have to assume like, yes, they probably have a Doctor Doom. Right, those are huge indicators. Um, but yeah, Mobius shuts down our opponent's deaths, She-Hulks, Zabus, Sarahs, Lokis, crucial card. You want to play this on three in some matchups, uh, but you can get away with it on four. You, you just want to prioritize getting it down by turn four. Um, right, so if I have Killmonger or Gladiator, you should, I'll, I'll play those out, or even Zabu or Quake. I'll play them out before I play Mobius on three, and I'll just play them on four. Uh, I'll play Miss Marvel, right, if I have Sabu on two. Um, lastly, in our three cost slot, we have Gladiator. This is a card that lots of people don't have because he came out pretty bad. Maximus fought for the same slot. But now at three cost, uh, not only did he gain one extra power, but the next best thing, which was Maximus, lost, uh, became a two cost, which means basically they synergize really well with, um, with our Miss Marvel. And because we have tech cards like Shang-Chi and Trantris that reduces the, uh, and Shadow King, that reduces the downsides in my, uh, in my opinion of, um, of this Gladiator. And obviously 3-8, insane, really good stats. 3 better than anything else, right? The next, the next best is, um, as far as power goes, is, um, Polaris or Swordmaster. If you're trying to replace this card because you don't own it, try the Polaris. You get some utility. Um, or actually, you could try Ghost. But I'll get to Ghost in a, in a, a minute or two. Uh, here you'll see I'm playing Legion on Savage Land because I'm expecting this wave to signify that my opponent's going to play Doctor Doom. And if I Legion in the Savage Land, they'll be locked out of left and middle, and I'm just hoping that, like, yeah, I just play like Gladiator and Maximus, and that should just be enough for it, especially since I'm ahead middle. That's really crucial. Yeah. So they played out, and now I can just play Gladiator on the left into, like, Miss Marvel Maximus, and as long as I don't get, like, arrowed, I uh, distinctively win this game, right? Distinctly. Yeah, so unless I play Gladiator then Zabu, just in case of Arrow. Um, small things like that you should play around just so you don't lose to random stuff. And then I just go Miss Marvel Maximus, I believe. And they have priority, so if they try an Arrow, they'd pull the Zabu. Pretty much the only thing I think I can lose to. Okay, so Gladiator is just your huge point slam alongside Maximus. It allows you to win a lot of situations that no other card can let you win. Um, I will play this card on turn three if I don't have Sarah in hand pretty frequently. Um, it's, it's, it's just a solid card to get you ahead on board in a lot of locations that you want to try and get ahead on. And it's kind of hard for your opponent to contest. So yeah, you'll, you'll play it out pretty frequently on curve because the downside is not that large. Um, I can't really think of a matchup where you wouldn't want to play it ahead. Uh, I, I guess, so the matchups where you should watch out and not play it ahead are decks that aren't that popular. Um, so Sandman, you might want to consider not playing this out on curve because they have so many big drops. Uh, Thor, Lockjaw, you might want to consider not playing this on curve uh, because you can oftentimes empty their deck, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second when I talk about tips about playing with the deck. Um, but yeah, so anything where it's like more than half the deck is very large stuff, bigger than your Gladiator, you don't want to play it out, but most of the time you can get away with it. Uh, oftentimes you can play this in the same lane as your Shang-Chi and play it before Shang-Chi, and that's just like a just-in-case you pull something that's 10 or more power, and then you get like double Shang-Chi, and those stuff is kind of fun. Uh, that actually happens quite more more often than you would think. All right, let's get to the four costs. We have Shang-Chi and Chantress. I feel like I don't really need to say too much about that. You pretty much never tempo the Shang-Chi um, 
unless you have nothing better to do and you need to like stick in a storm lane but you'd much rather tempo enchanters she's a four or five right more stats um, if you know you're in a matchup where that she's not that useful just a solid thing to put onto the board um, but otherwise you want to hold them both for their respective thing right enchantress hitting important ongoing shang hitting really big cards um, that would be the ideal scenario uh, you'll notice here we're going to our third infinity match and uh, i'm going to quake the white hot room and the sinister london since i figure they're going to fill the white hot try and fill the white hot room and this means they get less value off the sinister london right uh, that being said <laughs> i had a little bit punished because i actually played quake actually i couldn't play quake middle because i had summon another quake so yeah there, there was no way to get this murder world over unfortunately um, but yeah, we, I see Scorpion and Sunspot, and I'm thinking they are probably a high evil affliction deck, right? Like the Abomination stuff. Um, but you'll see I just play out the Gladiator. Um, unfortunately, we pull Thing, which means our second Gladiator is also small. But I do pull it into Murder World, which is fine. Um, I was basically just trying to also fill White Hot Room here. Mojo is interesting. It makes me think they're going to be like a Debris Goblin deck at first. Here I'm just trying to put stats on the board because I don't want to fall too far behind. Um, because I can use this Lucian to try and turn off the Sinister London and deny double Hulk. Uh, I don't think dodging priority and shang chi is a good way to reliably win because of Sunspot. Probably goes over the top. But yeah, so I get this double Miss Marvel and I'm just thinking, okay, how do I maintain priority? While playing this Sarah, I'm just like, okay, I can play Sarah and hopefully it goes into Murder World uh, since they want to play it in White Hot Room, right? They want to play for White Hot Room. Um, okay, okay, I was talking about forecast. Yeah, so Shang Chi Enchantress, fairly straightforward. Miss Marvel is our powerhouse that now is better in the deck because you can choose whether or not you want to activate her side lanes if you in a game you want priority right you can put two cards otherwise you can just put one card on each side until the last turn and then surprise you get five more power in each lane super super powerful card uh because it just works in the deck so well right she allows you to both gain and dodge priority willy-nilly and um <laughs> and you just have it just fits so smoothly with your tech cards because there's such different costs. But yeah, you'll see here they're snapping me. I take this as a sign that they're just going to play a big Hulk. Uh, I'm taking my time here because I'm trying to count if I win mid with these double marble buffs because I need to win mid through a Cyclops trigger and Misty Knight trigger, right? They got the extra energy from White Hot Room. And I can't so I and I can't fill because of the mojo, right? And because I want these Miss Marvel buffs. So I'm trying to figure out um what's the max power I can put out. And with Legion and Maximus, uh both Scorpion, that's eleven, uh fourteen with Mobius, and then Tasher, so I go to twenty-four, which does win. Uh and then I play out the Sabu and I snap back. And yeah, this is a spot right where it's really important that I have priority, I can turn off this London which means I'll win middle and right. Um, Alright, and then we have Sarah. Sarah is a card you pretty much always play on turn 5. The exceptions are in games where you are trying to end the game basically before turn 5 and versus Leech, right? Uh, in some games versus Leech. So versus Leech, um, Specifically, the times you don't play Sarah is when you want to use your tech cards in specific ways, or maybe you want to kill Monger and Chantry to shang -Chi, and you have the ability to do that on turn 5, so make sure you do that instead of Sarah. Uh, otherwise, you want to play Legion in games where your opponent has magic and you know they're going to leech you, or maybe you want to Legion a Vault or another location that just locks down the game, maybe a Crimson Cosmos. Uh, and you just want to follow up with a four cost, you know your opponent's playing a Sarah, for example, right, and just lock them out of the game. Um, so those are times where you don't Sarah. Um, but other than that, pretty much you're trying, usually when you Sarah, you want to put her in a lane that like dodges priority. Ideally, that would be a side lane, since you only have two five cost. Uh, you want to try and put her on the left and right, um, because she's four power. That doesn't interrupt your Miss Marvel with any of your other cards that's not named Legion. 
Uh, so I do think that's a helpful tip. Try and place Sarah on the sides if you can dodge priority while still putting her on the side. Uh, lastly, we have Legion, who is a powerful tech card. I think he provides you a little bit of power that doesn't interfere with Miss Marvel and a really, really strong location control tool that just steals a lot of games, right? We have, we're stealing games of tech cards and now we're also stealing games of locations, essentially. Uh, so very powerful card, turns off Limbo without having to worry about Cosmo and similar. Um, yeah, I like the card a lot. Uh, okay, let's quickly talk about then, you notice I keep talking about gaining and losing priority. So one of the cards that you'll see some people stick into Sarah Control, or maybe you want to try sticking into Sarah Control, uh, is Ghost, right? Maybe you, you don't have Gladiator, you want to try Ghost instead. 3-5 is good stats. I've often said that if Rhino was the 3-5, I would run it in this deck um, over, um, over Killmonger or over Quake, because I do want, I would much rather have a location control tool at that cost. Um, if it had some power attached to it. That being said, Ghost comes with good and bad, in my opinion. I think you do have to change the format of the deck if you're trying to include Ghost, uh, because if you notice from uh, the past few games, uh, the past game, sorry, um, I basically won because I was able to gain priority and ensure that my opponent can't counter my counterplay. Right. So, yeah, like you don't want a card like uh, one of your three costs, especially because uh, it's, it is kind of hard to fit in a three cost on the final turn. So that's why you often play Mobius and Gladiator on curve, Killmonger out on curve. Um, having a card that forces you to dodge priority is not as good as you might think. Because if you do include Ghost, sure, you can guarantee that you're always not having priority, um, that you can... Like in this situation, for example, my opponent's going to play a Hulk. I can guarantee you that you're going to shank treat it, right? Um, but in my opinion, because it's so easy to just play like Mobius, Miss Marvel, Sarah, like a curve like that and dodge priority that way that it's really unnecessary to to also include a card that forces you to just like lose a lot of games um i i can understand more excuses that are like 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 an excuse against a uh, ghost that i often hear is like eliath will wreck you this deck does not care about eliath we're fighting for all three lanes uh, there's very few scenarios where ghost and eliath is going to be a problem and I do think it's a good card in certain decks. I do think if you're going to run it, you're going to have to cut Quake and Legion and put some other stuff instead. Uh, I've tried Arrow and Gamora. Uh, Gamora might be better with Ghost since Gamora can't get Shang-Chi then. And probably Quake, something like Jeff, because those are two very powerful cards in the list that also require priority in a lot of scenarios. And if you play out the Ghost early and then you draw into one of them, all of a sudden they're basically useless. So do, do be aware of that um, if you are trying to put Ghost in, that you probably should not have Legion and Quake. And I do think those cards are pretty crucial, so I personally have not liked Ghost in there. Uh, I tried like one or two games of it, so I'm not like 100% sure, but um, that is something to be aware of. Um, otherwise, you can see a variety of tech cards out there right over Quake and Killmonger, Jeff is better into a lot of control uh, style decks, stuff that runs um, Profex, Storm, those types of things. It's a generically good card. I think Lizard is a very strong power tool that is better in the mirror. Um, be and this is because it's just more stats. You can Enchantress it in the mirror. It just allows you to put out a lot of power. Um, and I think it's just a very solid card in this list as well. Other than that, I think the, the rest of the cards are very, very solid. Um, nothing I would consider too much. You could, 
if it becomes like the main deck that exists, you can consider putting in, in, in a rogue. And if you put in rogue, it would be probably over Killmonger or Shadow King, depending on what kind of meta you're facing, right? If it's only Sarah in the meta, it's over the Killmonger for sure. And what you'd be looking to hit with the rogue is opposing Mobius, sometimes opposing Miss Marvel. Um, so yeah, do, do be aware of that. Uh, that that is one tech choice that you can make if you're trying to be uh, kind of extra sneaky um, in this meta game. But yeah, I think that covers the basics of all the cards. Um, I think I'll go deeper into some of these games right now. You'll notice here I was trying to win Blackstone because it's just so good for my opponent, but they're also not snapping me, so I'm not super worried. We have this eight cube lead, so I'm just looking to steal another game, basically. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if it's worth it to Legion and turn it off, but since I'm so far behind, I just lose to Sunspot Soaking. So I'm just considering just playing Legion mid and staying behind on priority and maybe I can get a Shang-Chi off. Um, so yeah, I think they're going to play something mid, so I'm hoping to win back priority that way. Uh, the main card I'm looking for here actually is Shadow King, so I can reset some of my Cyclops stuff and reset their Sunspot as well. So that's what I'm hoping to draw here. Okay, let's see, I activate the Limbo just to deny them the Castle Blackstone. Um, we have Mobius out, so I'm not worried about any cheaper stuff, right? The A bomb that I had to pay uh, almost full price for here. But yeah, I was just counting out my mana, and in order to Shang-Chi and Enchantress and Maximus and even Shadow King, right? I needed to play out the Gladiator um, in order to play out my whole hand here. Okay, so you'll see Shadow King here is. 3, 6 is 8 power, and then we even minus the sunspot for 7. So it's it's literally like, I don't know how much power it is. <laughs> 8 uh, plus 7 plus 2, right? Oh, no, no, no. So yeah, it's 15 power Shadow King. Very nice, right? Uh, I'm just sticking Chatter Third for extra power. I'm trying to it mid um, in case maybe they put their Hulk there. The, th the issue is, like, if I put it mid, I'm only up by one, so I decided just to shank to the left because I think that's m most likely where they would put a uh, Hulk, and I am just worried about like them sticking a Misty Knight middle and right, and that puts them to 17 right if they go Hulk Misty Knight. So I'm like, okay, I'll just shank you on this side. The only way they can ever come back on the left is with a Hulk, so uh, should be enough there. And yeah, so uh, I Maximus mid. Uh, I could have Maximus Limbo as well, the left as well, for one extra power, but just put it mid for fun, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I could have, I should have put a left for one extra power. It would have turned off Miss Marvel, but it would have been one bonus power, which was a good thing. Yeah, so we're able to close up that game, and that's pretty much three games, right? Uh, two back-to-back -back games where it's just like you win that eight cuber, and then you're just waiting it out to win two more cubes. Uh, or that's the fourth game actually. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, because there is one where my opponent left, right? But yeah, that's that's your ideal situation, is you get ahead and you do that. Um, lots of times people ask me, is this a ladder deck versus a conquest deck? And my response to that always is, is that it's actually better on ladder uh, from my experience, um, obviously. So to give you a, an example of my statistics, uh, in conquest, or specifically infinity conquest, I have like a 86% win rate with the deck, uh, at least this version, um, that with Jeff or Quake. Um, and then, but obviously you're gonna have a much higher uh, win rate in Conquest if you're really good with the deck, uh, with any deck, right? Uh, the best decks in Conquest have 60% win rates versus on Ladder, they have like 50 something. Um, and on Ladder this season, I played Ladder for four days, I believe. I have a 66% win rate, but a one cube rate. Basically that deck's brought me most of the way that I've climbed. So to give you an example, like I was in like top like 1000, uh, and then I climbed to like top 500 basically. Uh, with this deck, this deck basically brought me in like the four days I played 100 games or so, I think 200 games, uh, but those are other decks. Um, like I would say the 100 games out of the 500 SP that I've gained, that like 
four or 350 of them are from Sarah Control. Um, I think that would add up because like each cube is like three to four SP. And I have like 80 plus 87 cubes. No, sorry, 72 cubes. Uh, so it's like, oh okay, yeah, like 250. Yeah. 250 out of the 500 SP I've gained is just with Sarah Control. Um, I had a different variation of the list that I also went up 200 with, but I don't think it's as good as this one. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But if there's anything specifically I miss, any situation you want me to talk about uh, while I'm waiting for this last game, uh, definitely go in the comments below. Uh, let me know. Um, I tried to cover everything that everyone asked me about, even if I didn't explicitly say, like, oh, someone asked me about this. Um, yeah, it's a deck that don't be afraid if you struggle with it at first, um, but because it is tough, a little bit tougher to play because I would say the main skill you need to do well with this deck is to understand your opponent's win conditions, right? Uh, understand can you just beat them by playing out your stats some games can you beat them by playing tech cards later versus earlier right are they gonna cosmo you if you try and wait too long or do you need to play a shang chi on five um, lots of small things like knowing if you can leech in certain locations destruction locations Versus Mr. Negative, I would win games where they'd play negative into chain just because like, I leech in an altar of death on the final turn and they can't do anything. Um, so just small things like that. It's like you need to figure out what their deck is early from their first like two, three cards. Luckily, you can pretty much get away with just playing Zabu into Mobius. Uh, so as long as you know their deck by turn four or five, you should be in a good spot. And then you just need to play from there. Um, Play for your outs. Retreat for one or two cubes if you don't have the ability to beat their tech or their high roll. Uh, the, the only thing that really counters this deck, I mean, obviously Mobius is super strong into it, but uh, I would say what's what's a bigger issue sometimes is fair, uh, but high stat style decks. These are decks like this old silky smooth deck. Uh, right, the movement stuff where they're just playing on curve, doing their own thing. Uh, maybe Black Bolt Darkhawk, where they're trying to deny you draws and then just kind of playing out like uh, Black Bolt and Stature, dodging tech cards, but also just putting a lot of stats. Uh, I think those are both very, very winnable matchups because if we have our own Mobius, Gladiator and Maximus do allow us to contest like the Stature style, Miles style decks, um, but those are definitely the toughest to face, I would say. Uh, otherwise, Hella is really, really rough for this deck. Uh, in a lot of scenarios, you have to, but um, anything that's like super on reveal based can be tough because we don't have any way to stop it. Uh, obviously, Wong style decks we can stop with like enchanters, but um, yeah, that is something to keep in mind. All right, uh, rather than talk more about the deck now, I'm going to just talk about this game. I think this was the most interesting game out of the five I played. So I'm just going to talk through exactly my thought process. Um, I actually play a lot more passive this game, and I'll talk about why. Uh, it's because of a certain card that we'll see as soon. Um, but yeah, we have very good starting hand here. We have Salbucera, Gladiator, uh, and even a Shadow King potentially could be useful. But we do have Danger Room, right? Uh, which always is very scary for me. I feel like I've lost so many games to Danger Room killing my cards. Um, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, Castle Blackstone mid is pretty good. That being said, I can only really throw Zabu there. Um, my opponent played a high Evo Misty Knight, which is a very strong card. Uh, oh, a very uh, good indicator that they're playing a high Evo style deck. Elysium here, honestly, kind of scary. Uh, but it does let me put out the Sarah early. It's kind of scary because I don't have this Mobius, and now they can play out something fairly strong here. Right? And you'll notice they play Mobius here. So all of a sudden they have the Elysium bonus. I don't have Sarah or Elysium here. I do still get the Castle Blackstone, which is good. But yeah, you'll notice Mobius is a big reason why I play a lot more passive in here in this matchup, uh, because that is a very powerful tech card um, in this spot. 
But yeah, so I'm just thinking about like if I play Gladiator into something next turn, can I beat them just like playing Hulk or Doctor Doom on like turn five into like the other one on turn six? And I think eventually I come to analysis that I cannot, so I just take the retreat. Right, Mobius on Elysium matchup, even though I'm winning this Castle Blackstone, I most likely won't be winning it the next turn. And yeah, it, I'm assuming at this point that it's some sort of like fair high evo affliction style deck, maybe with like Zabu, Shang-Chi, Enchantress, um, kind of Miss Marvel stuff. We did see something similar to that, I think in an earlier game. But yeah, so I just take the retreat there. Um, <laughs> I think that's fair. Uh, TVA here is kind of scary because there's an Okan Embassy buff cards my opponent could have. They already have a Sunspot down. Um, that being said, I do have Sabu to come down, so maybe I can get like a good 4-drop. Uh, obviously, Miss Marvel's a lot weaker here. But yeah, I'm basically waiting to see if I can get like a Killmonger or Gladiator. Um, and that would be very powerful here. But yeah, back when Miss Marvel only required one card, I would play the Zabu on one of the side lanes. But... Here I'll, I'll play it mid um, to just try and play around. Like maybe I'm gonna Shadow King this sunspot, right? Uh, and just hope that Shadow King's enough on the side lane. Yeah, they go sunspot Nebula. Obviously, if I had Killmonger, I would snap here. Um, without Killmonger, I don't think I can. Uh, Atlantis here is interesting though, because Atlantis means I can play uh, Mobius onto the Atlantis and if they want to try and contest the 10 power that Mobius is adding, they lose the five power from Atlantis, uh, and even if Nebula is growing, um, she's only going to grow to eight, right? So now here I'm just trying to figure out, I can't really contest every lane, right? If I try and contest middle, um, it's not really going to work out, right? Uh, but I do draw Quake, which does allow me to contest two lanes. I'm assuming they never play right because uh, it's too hard for them to win. So that's why I'm rotating the Atlantis. Um, but I'm trying to figure out where I rotate it. And I decide just to go all in the left and say that five power will be enough, especially if I was shrinking the sunspot. And they decide to go in mid. So yeah, I do think it's kind of a pure 50 50. Um, And yeah, we get this Shadow King off, which resets himself, by the way, do be aware of that. Um, and win this TV again, which is nice, nice two cubes. Um, solid win. But yeah, and matchups, especially when they have Mobius, you need to take it slow, you need to see they Mobius you, uh, oftentimes you'll just play stats out, you'll play your Gladiator out early, you'll play Miss Marvel and you'll just try and outstat your opponent that way. Um, you'll play even Legion on curve over your Sarah uh, if they have Mobius, especially if they're snapping you. Um, so yeah, usually you can afford to Buddha and just like pass, not play stats on the board. But, but in matchups with have movies, uh, I think you should <laughs> not do that. Uh, Gamma Lab here is intriguing. I could stick an Enchantress there or a Gladiator. Obviously, Enchantress would be better. Um, but I decide just to Quake it instead. And like, I figure they're never playing in Strange Academy because Strange Academy can flip into Fist Tower, um, which would lose a ton of powers. Um, but they decide just to play mid, uh, I guess, for this Mobius, which is fine. Uh, now here the question is, do I Enchantress it or do I just play Miss Marvel? I decide just to Miss Marvel, since it's just a decent amount of stats. Right? My opponent didn't have a turn one or turn two play, so if I just play out my stats here, Miss Marvel into ideally Gladiator plus a two drop, or Legion um, into maybe two three drops. That is the game plan that we're looking here. Um, post Mobius. They actually go for Kyre on the Strange Academy, which is kind of strange to me because playing Strange Academy could knock you into Fist Tower, which is really bad, right? Uh, I'm not really sure what they're doing. I do decide to Enchantress um, in case I draw Killmonger and Shang-Chi. Maybe I'm going to want to do that 
it does run the risk of Enchantress landing in Fist Tower, but I think I just have to take that chance. Um, and turns out it was a good decision because I actually decided to magic the Limbo. And now I'm just thinking, oh, is it now it's dawning on me that, oh, maybe it's not like the tempo style high evo. It could just be regular she not high evo and they just run Mobius as a tech card. And honestly, it doesn't sound too terrible. <laughs> Um, that being said, I kind of have a decision here. It's turn six. If I play into Gamma Lab with this Legion, I could just die if they play mid or or left. Um, so turning this off is not looking too appealing. But I do believe I just decide to Gladiator, or just do some like yeah, Gladiator one side, Shadow King with Kyer. Um, I decide not to play one of the twos. Yeah, I think I'm just planning on playing one of the twos next turn. Like two, two plus something. Three, right? That would be the ideal, right? Shadow King, Maximus, plus Killmonger, or Mobius. Obviously, Killmonger would have been the best draw, but. Uh, so here I'm just trying to figure out can I beat Hulk, Hulk everywhere? And Shadow King does win me middle because I reset Zabu and Miss Marvel. And then I'm just splitting up. Maximus and Mobius. I'm trying to figure out if it's even worth it to Maximus as Gamma Lab. Because they could also just go like a middling line, right? Of just playing some smaller stuff um, across multiple lanes. So that is kind of why I decided to go this middling line of like not playing Maximus right. Um, yeah, they decided just to go Big Hulk. It's kind of a huge test play and it, it did come out later finding out that they just play Hulk here is the play that they would do. Um, and it is enough to win, left and right, or sorry, uh, right and mid. Take two cubes. Alright, so even though they're running Mobius, still able just to like win with Gladiator Maximus and Miss Marvel just being stats on the board. Um, Shadow King, pretty crucial here as well, just to reset our own cards. Big House middle ear is kind of intriguing because with my Zabu I can get into Big House with some of my uh, like my Miss Marvel or similar um, but they do run Mobius which means they couldn't lock me out of Big House as well um, but I would actually most likely since they're playing Shinot I would assume they get rid of Big House altogether so they have the option to drop their hulks wherever they want um, but it's kind of iffy it did, a lot of this comes down to what is the last location is it good or bad? Uh, Titan, pretty good for them. Reduces the cost of their six cost cards. I just decided to play Gladiator on curve. One of the bigger things that I can put in Big House. We do peel She-Hulk, which sucks. And what sucks even more is that they play Kyra right after. So even if I get the Shang-Chi, I actually have to Enchantress first. Uh, I decide to try and quake the Big House over to the left. Um, under the hopes that they don't play anything super large there. And maybe I can get this Enchantress and Shang-Chi for the Kyre She-Hulk. Okay, so here I get the Shang-Chi and I'm like, oh yeah, let me play out this Sarah. This guarantees I'm behind on priority because um, playing it left or, or playing it right or mid does because the uh, Nebula will grow. So I decide to play it right. I'm hoping that right if I, I play this right, then for mid that's where I can stick the Enchantress and Shang Chi, uh, or that's where I can stick this Maximus, etc. Uh, I can't snap here because yeah, the Mobius or in this case the Leech comes out. Um, that being said, right, lots of people say this deck dies to Leech. Just look at my stats in my head. Right, I have a one six Maximus. A 4 7 Legion, or I can just spread out a bunch of t uh, 2 threes. Right, putting one of them in Big House is enough to win there. Putting Maximus in Mobius mid is just putting me up to 17 there. And now, all of a sudden, if they play Hulk, even if Misty Knight goes left or mid, I just win the game, right? 
So yeah, in a game where you know leech, you just hold your important, uh, hold your Maximus, hold your Gladiator, and try and play your other like Miss Marvel. Make sure you play Miss Marvel early, etc. Make sure you play your tech cards early, and it's a pretty straightforward game, <laughs> right? Especially in the without a limbo, it's really hard for leech to do anything. Um, if they have limbo and you expect leech, make sure you play out the legion to get rid of the limbo. And all of a sudden they're playing three power on turn five and you're playing seven. And that's really tough for that deck to come back from. So deck does not die to leech. I think leech is not a bad card to go in. Sometimes in certain matchups like the Lockjaw Thanos list, leech can prevent you from like stopping their insane lockjaw high rule and maybe you could have stopped it otherwise but like in most cases you know whether or not you're beat post leech ah uh, here's an interesting spot where okay we're in high stakes now but i have a very solid lead just from like a bunch of solid two cube wins um nor is really good for them so i'm actually very surprised that they go for limbo here uh, I almost consider putting Miss Marvel in Nora Dimension just so I could get the Nora cards and keep up with it when they try and go for it. Here we have a pretty fair expansion. Uh, they, theirs, I guess, is a little bit less value because it hits Yellow Dragon hits Sunspot. But uh, getting a Nuatu is pretty nice with Miss Marvel just because it means I don't have to worry about like random cards winning there. I get to play at the Mobius here, turn four, prevents any kind of cheating that they can do with the Slimbo. Um, but yeah, here, I, I know that they have Leech, I just saw the last game, so I decided to just go for this Legion, uh, turn off the Limbo now, and then on the last turn, maybe I just go like Shadow King Maximus or Maximus Gladiator, um, <laughs> I even hover it, uh, and then I'm just debating whether or not I snap. I'm kind of waiting to see if they snap me, because that would most likely mean that they're leeching, um, or just waiting for them to play the Leech. Because if they don't play the Leech here, that's where it can get kind of tricky. Um, but I'm fairly certain if I turn off Limbo here with the Miss Marvel, with the Gladiator, with the Maximus, I can wrap up this game. Yeah, they just go for Misty Knight, which does buff the Sunspot. Um, I guess some some power across the board. But that being said, pretty much the final turn always is Hulk. There's not much better that they can do. Um, if I play Maximus on the right, then uh, I get the Smith Marvel bonus. I stop the Nebula from growing, so I'm adding 11 there, right? I'm going up to 14, which means they would need 7 to win there. And now I'm just trying to figure out how I can win mid. Because I could Shadow King and reset the Zabu and Miss Marvel, which would give me a total of 8 points there. But then if they Cyclops, uh, I'm back down to 6, right? Uh, if they Misty Knight and get there, they would even win there. Uh, but if I play Gladiator, I go up to 10, they can bring me down to 8. At most, they can go up to 9 there. Um, so I decide just to Gladiator, hope that it doesn't pull something big, right? If it pulls a She-Hulk, I could lose. Um, one important note that I forgot to bring up earlier is you should almost always Maximus before you Gladiator because there's a lot of random locations and random cards that your opponent can play out that to draw them one extra card, right? Nico, for example. And if you Maximus first, you'll empty your opponent's deck, which means Gladiator will be free. Uh, important tip that I probably should have said earlier when I was bringing up the cards. Uh, actually, one of the games I lost, uh, when I lost eight cubes, I brought the game all the way back. And then I played Maximus, but I played Legion first on a location that adds cards to your hand. And so my Maximus didn't empty my opponent's deck and I lost because of that. Um, because they're playing a lockjaw deck, and but yeah, so yeah, do be aware of that. Is that final turn Maximus can empty lockjaws, uh, especially if, especially if they play Jubilee. Um, it can just empty their deck so that you have a free Gladiator. I think that's a super important tip to keep track of. But yeah, otherwise, that was more than my Infinity tick of the deck. Um, I hope you enjoyed the deck walkthrough or guide. Um, let me know if there's anything you think I can improve on in the future. 
I know it's kind of like an offhand kind of just what is my thoughts on the deck? What do I think each card is used for? But that is a little bit different than I do these videos. Usually it's more like how I just described the last game there where I just go through the specific what am I thinking each turn and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you made it this far, definitely hit the like and subscribe if you're not already. And I will catch you all in the next one.